ยอร์ดอนจอยจอเนี่ยจิกเตนจาเทียจงเพมอชัวซอนซูตูกูเฮริชวาลิวาย่อดอชอเจจอจงฟูอเมริกาตออิเลียนะพูมาปอนดอโ
needed to explain basically why they dismissed that criminal charge. Okay, and? And they did submit a writing which is most amazing because it, it says quite a bit, but mainly it gets down to this. Uh, they were a little bit surprised that the defendants in that case, the Hmong defendants, mm -hmm. were able to attract such an amazing criminal defense team. And I, I think mm -hmm. you've interviewed some of them. Sure, I, and and you know, uh, sure. they were actually, uh, Mr. Brosnahan and Mr. Kicker mm -hmm. are really California's like tied for number one lawyers, you know, mm -hmm, sure. and, and uh, very impressive group. I guess the case was so high profile mm -hmm. that it starts to attract that caliber of lawyer, whatever. I see. But the bottom line is those two guys managed to blow major holes in okay. the prosecution's case. And they basically noted that in a motion to dismiss uh, the case, quite a few lies were proven okay. in the USA's case. I see. And it was sort of like, gotcha. And okay. the way lies work in law cases, you know, maybe you could survive one or two or three, uh -huh. but if you got like 10 or 15, uh -huh. it's like, forget like, it. Forget You're it. not gonna win. Yeah, just okay. just forget it. Okay. And they had like 25 major lies. I see. And, and big time stuff, and it was mainly Mr. Decker Mm -hmm. uh, just telling a lot of lies, and that was okay. part of our case. Is that they their now, case? Let, let me stop you there. Who's lying, Mr. Decker? Lie yeah. or the uh, the defendant lie? No, no, Mr. Decker. Okay, I yeah, want to make sure. Oh yeah, no, 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 <laughs> okay. no, no. The, uh, and and actually, the Hmong defendants really didn't say much. They were just like there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've seen like the videotaping, uh, some of the evidence of that, and okay. most of it, they're just there. And and what, in in specific detail? So the judge that you said you're not particularly like very much? Uh, well, I don't like what he's doing on this case. Doing. Okay, I, I don't, in this case. So, actually, I like that judge a lot. He's a good guy, but on this case, he should set it for trial, and he's okay. not. He's and not. So, what he did do was he required them to make a statement, why did you dismiss? Well, that was actually quite helpful, because I okay. want to know that. Okay. We now have that answer. I then submitted something to the judge requesting that he permit me uh, to take uh, a couple depositions, one of Mr. Decker. Okay. Okay. And um, I don't, I asked that, uh, gosh, it must be eight weeks ago and I have okay. not had a response. Normally, it's not so hard to get a deposition okay. in a case, but that's you how mean it went. Deposition from Mr. Stephen Decker. Decker? Yeah. All right. Where I could have him answer questions at, under oath. That's okay. what that would be. Okay. And a court reporter would take it all down. So okay. that request is pending. But really, then, what I want the judge to do, my real thing is set a trial date. What your ultimate goal is, it's, it's what, what's next, your ultimate goal is to get the judge, um, you know, uh, uh, set up a, a trial? A jury trial. Okay, jury trial. Yes, all that's right. right. We've asked for a jury, yes. Mr. Frank, what do you think about this case? Do you think the uh, plaintiff right now, they are the plaintiff, not the right. defendant anymore. Right. Uh, you think the plaintiff, like, uh, uh, do you have a chance at all win this case uh, again to federal government and the agents and agents uh, supervisor? You know, so many people have told me there's no way you can win this case, You're not, mm -hmm. including Mr. Brajnahan. He, he just told me, forget it. I okay, see. don't even just, and he would not cooperate with me. He did cooperate in this regard. Mm -hmm. He had us, he invited us to come to his office, which we did, and uh, Nia came with me. Mm -hmm. And they made a kind of presentation to us mm -hmm. of all the evidence. And he was trying to show me, look, there's a lot of evidence against these guys. I see. Look at all this stuff. You don't want to, you want to, they, they got out of this case, let it go. That was kind of where he was at. Okay. And I think part of his issue was, if you start to uh, dig in, dig in uh -huh. they might charge it. They dismiss case, uh, the case on their own. That means they could refile it. I see. And this was something... What, what, what do you think about that? Can well, they refile and then the, bring those <clears throat> um, uh, defendants back? You know, the, the answer is yes. But it's a risk. It's a risk. And, and we all are taking that risk. Okay. And uh, I remember having this discussion with mm -hmm. everyone. They all like... Ooh, I mean, could that happen? Is, yes. Is that part of the reason why not all of them agreed to um, file, uh, to be included in the civil suit yeah. that you are working on right now? Right, there, there was a concern that uh, there might be retaliation. Now, what I can okay. tell you, though, is like, if you look at the, this, mm -hmm. the, the date of this decision, mm -hmm. this is October 17, 2012. Right. That's a decision dismissing the case. Right. Well, this has been several years, right? Right. And there's been no new it case. It is now three yeah. years. So, and yeah, and, and there's been no new case. Okay. So that doesn't mean they couldn't do it tomorrow. 
Okay. Tomorrow's a new day. Mm -hmm. But I don't, you know, they haven't done it yet. I don't think they're going to do it. And then to, to assure <coughs> some of the audience uh, uh, of the risk of, that the federal government may bring those guys back uh, and, uh, and file a new charge with them, as a lawyer standpoint, what uh, you know? Uh, what do you what do you what do you think? Um, well, it's just a fact that it's a risk. A, okay, that, that's just a fact. Uh, to give an example, of this I wanted to also. Uh, I'm going to be taking the deposition of the one of the the lead defendant in the mm -hmm. underlying criminal case, mm -hmm. Lieutenant uh, Jack. Mm -hmm. I I talked to the public defender about it. I, I first talked to him. Okay. But then I talked to the public defender, and the public defender wrote me a very nice, polite letter saying, okay. "No, I will not let you uh, take the uh, lieutenant colonel's." Um, deposition mm -hmm. because one of the charges carries a, a life term. I see. And there's a rule that if the the federal one of the federal statute of limitations rules, if mm -hmm. the if the sentence is life, mm -hmm. then there's no statute of limitations. Oh, I see. So that means they could bring it in 20 and years. In 20 years. As a practical matter, mm -hmm. they're not. Okay. But as a lawyer, you know, he's advising his mm -hmm. client, don't talk to Herman. I see. But okay. um, it was nice because he gave me an idea that I had mm -hmm. I kind of figured out about okay. this case now. Okay, so regardless, anyway, you are going, you and the three um, uh, plaintiffs, Nia Kao Vang, uh, David Vang, uh, Chu Hu Vang, and their spouses are going with this case anyway. W unfortunately, the spouses got dismissed. So the spouses okay. are not, but the they three are, not, are, yeah. Okay, they are not yeah. part of the... Um, um, civil suit anymore. They are not. They, are they not. were part of it, okay. uh, but the uh, federal judge dismissed them, and that part of the decision, uh, the Court of Appeals did not reverse. Okay. So. All right. So now we want to be sure. Sorry to the wives. <laughs> They're not in. We want to be clear that um, yeah. only the three plaintiffs are um, Nye Kao Vang, um, David Vang, and Chu Fu Vang. Yes. All right. Now, is anything else about this case? And and this um, the, this case that right now with the um, Sacramento court or uh, um, a federal court that you would like to tell our audience. Yeah, the main thing uh, the main thing is that Stephen Decker, as an undercover agent, uh, got made a decision to bring forward a lieutenant colonel U.S. Army mm -hmm. to make it look like it was an official U.S. sanctioned event. I and see. so, in other words, he was coming forward saying. This is a U.S. government deal. Mm -hmm. They're behind it. I see. And we need some help from you guys. Are you okay with that? Oh, okay. It wasn't like, hey, mm -hmm. psst, come here. We're going to do a war. I it see. was, hi, Official. You, USA needs your help again. And that's why they got the, the colonel in. I see. To make it look like a USA deal. I see. And everyone was thinking, hmm. okay, so this has USA backing, right? Uh -huh. Everyone had that idea. Mm -hmm. Well, Decker, when he goes to the grand jury, he, I mean, they never mention anything about that concept, that this I was see. represented as a official U.S. deal. Okay. So all the evidence, uh, when I go to Mr. Brosnahan's office, mm -hmm. all that evidence that I'm looking at, mm -hmm. okay, and I'm, basically it's like they're in a room and we've got Stinger missiles mm -hmm. in a box I that see. Decker's people brought there. Mm -hmm. and basically offered up for free. We will give you this missile. We will transport it all the way to Thailand for, for you. free. For free. All you got to do is get to Thailand, then you're going to pick them up and, and get them into it. Laos. I'm not sure how you're going to get into Laos, but you're going to carry all these things in on donkeys. <laughs> I don't know how. I remember... That's interesting. The whole plan was so absurd. It, mm -hmm. you know, it's like if you read it, you're like, Oh, get out of here. Uh -huh. how, how are you going to get all that stuff in? Mm -hmm. So but, in other words, um, you know what? Um, I don't think all of our audience get to hear about the, the facts and evidence of that case. Yeah. Now, I'm glad you, you bring that up. Besides having those, um, you know, like uh, weapons and all those stuff that they accuse um, um, the, attend, um, the defendant at the time, can you, now that you have seen the evidence, can you tell a little bit more of what kind of weapon that they actually trying to sell to the defendants. It's Stinger missiles. Okay. Yeah. And the, and the sale, I don't know if you could really call it a sale it's, because okay. it was a gift. It's a gift. Yeah. I will give you all this. We're going to put it in Thailand. You're then going to go there and get it and pick it up and somehow walk it into Laos. Okay. Then uh, they sanctioned the preparation of a report 
that would be how, really it was a, a nice blueprint. Mm -hmm. How would you take now, over? Now who made that blueprint? Print? Uh, one of these. Um, one of the defendants. One, yeah, one of these okay. guys, and uh, I'm trying to remember his name. I've talked to him a few times, but okay. uh, I think it's... Was it David? I think it's David. Okay. Yeah, David Vang. And the understanding was the U.S. government wanted a report. Oh, If okay. we were to wage a war on Laos, what would be the right way to do it? And so they asked him, give me a, doc a strategy document. Kind of a proposal. Uh, yeah, and it took the form of something called it popcorn, which mm -hmm. was a code okay. word. It's and Operation it's, Popcorn. <clears throat> it's Operation Popcorn, and yeah. it laid out what, what as I read it, I, I don't have a military background mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. but as I read it, I couldn't help to think, wow, this is really good. Uh -huh. I mean, this is how to do it. You know, uh -huh. you start off, you go in, the first thing you do is you bomb all their communication systems. Okay. Well, that sounds smart, right? That sounds Get smart. rid of all that right away. Right. Okay, and then it, it starts about uh, bombing strategic buildings like mm -hmm. um, the president and the, mm -hmm. the chief administrative office. Okay. Well, just blow that up right away, right? Okay. Um, uh, and then like the, the courts and okay. the police and the military sites. So okay. it was really very, you know, you don't want to just go in and try to firebomb the whole country. Right. You just pick, you pick strategic sites. So he did a okay. wonderful job laying it out. And they, they used that as evidence saying, these guys want to start a war against Laos. Look at that. I see. Well, you asked us for this document. Okay. They so, never said that. By the way, please mm. prepare this for us. Okay. So the agent itself actually asking for that blueprint. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. And then they write it up and then they accuse him of starting a war. It's like, well, you asked me true. for this document. That's uh, true. You, you offer to give me all this stuff mm -hmm. to go do it. Uh, I mean, most of these people, there's, they, they have no intent of starting a war. Right. I mean, the, one of my guys here, um, I'm trying was to remember it, what, which, was which it one. Was it I think it's him. Mm -hmm. He's a police detective. Right, he is. Uh, and and he, what he was interested in doing, as a lot among people are, is to somehow document what's going on mm -hmm. as a film. Mm. He was interested in doing a documentary film mm -hmm. on what is happening in Laos. That was his purpose. That's pretty much it. And, and next thing he knows, he's in like an RV, uh -huh. and in the back of the RV, they got maps of Laos, and they've got Stinger missiles, mm -hmm. and they're sitting down with this big plan, and he's like, I just want to film a documentary. Mm -hmm. Excuse mm -hmm. me, I must be in the wrong. And that R uh, uh, SUV belonged to um, H&D Decker? Yeah, yeah. Yes. All okay. that, yes. All of those. All of it. All of the um, yep. weapons and everything else. And it was made to, th it was made to look like a U.S. government deal. Oh, That's okay. the deal. That's the deal. And you know, okay. it was interesting after, uh, after Mr. Brosnahan and I uh, mm. talked several times and his associate colleague gave us this show and tell of all the evidence, mm -hmm. he kind of wanted to make sure that we got it. Like, did you see that stuff? Oh, and I okay. asked his associate, very smart guy, mm. one question though. Okay, you got him in a room with Stinger missiles talking turkey. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. That's like a negotiation, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, I asked him though, do you agree that if they made it seem like this was a U.S. government back deal, and just like before at, in the Vietnam War, right. the, the U.S. government is coming to the Hmong people. They actually and, brought stuff. To and, and we're saying, yeah, well, we need your help again. Right. If that was the premise, right. and then but that premise got cut out. Like mm -hmm. when you go to the grand jury, that first part gets lopped uh, off, okay. and all they see is this beautiful popcorn document with a blueprint oh, of how to oh, fight oh, Laos and Stinger missile photos. Oh, okay. um, he he agreed with me. You got a case. <laughs> Okay. And it was really interesting because their whole point in bringing me there was to show me I don't have a case. You, okay. But at the end of the day, I knew it, and I knew I was and right. Said you had I knew case. I was right. Okay. And then when we got in front of the Ninth Circuit, they totally got it right away. Oh. Okay. They, it was like basically Stephen Decker mm -hmm. tricked the grand jury into okay. indicting these people. Indicted these people. And the whole thing was uh, mm -hmm. a big pack of lies, and it really is, okay. it really is. From the first time I, I spoke to you about this case, it got a lot of uh, uh, interesting in our community, and not just <clears throat> in the United States, but all, all over the world that watching the program, and hopefully yeah. with this you know, paperwork and document, and now going back to the federal court in Sacramento, that you will update us with the next step. Uh, hopefully, uh, what, what do you say? Three months from now, maybe yeah. six months from now? Three months we should three. have a trial. In three months we should have a trial date. Okay. That date may be out a ways, but at least we'll have okay. a trial date. Yeah. And then the last question about this case is that what are you seeking for from the um, U.S. government? Well, damages. Okay. Yeah, we want money. 
and a lot of money, but the amount of money will be determined by a jury. Okay. So we will we'll present all the facts to a jury and we'll tell as a result of this, uh, my clients had to spend time in jail. Uh -huh. uh, they they were scared to death that their right. whole world was Absolutely. over. Uh, they're understanding they're going away for ten years. Okay, this is not like a you know go, go clean up garbage on the highway kind of mm. case. This is a federal prison forever right. or for ten year kind of case. Mm -hmm. um, life as they knew it had come to an end. They were scared to death. Uh, they were losing everything, their homes, their businesses, everything sure. they could have. They all, all of a sudden they needed money for lawyers. They have mm -hmm. no money for this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so we want damages for that. We also mm -hmm. uh, want something called injunctive relief to make sure they don't do it again. To these defendants? Yeah, to, to bar the U.S. government from doing this again. Oh, to that's them. good. Okay. Yeah. With that, we're going to leave um, this case okay. um, status right now, but we will sure follow up with you. 我从到了一种的这个定价